Chapter 1 The Magic of Belief Mummy, what makes people clever? Why are some cleverer than others? Mummy, why do some boys die before they've grown right up? Mummy, why do they make poison if it kills people? Why are some people nice and others horrid? Once upon a time there were three bears. Why, mummy, why? As a child my mind was besieged with perplexities. I was always questioning, questioning, struggling in my inquiring disposition to unravel mysteries that had baffled others far, far beyond my years, all through the ages. In a different degree, I suppose, that my curiosity has stayed with me through the passing years. For although many perplexities have been resolved for me, others have come to take their place. It is the way with psychologists, the way of anyone who would probe the magic powers of the mind. The seed of curiosity, once it is born, is with you all your life, hardwired into you, wherever you are. You can be in the Himalayas, or you can be in the underground of Piccadilly. The workings of the mind, your mind, and the minds of other people, are of such complexity, but so infinitely fascinating, to study that, once you have started to probe their mysteries, you never cease to marvel, and the claims of one upon your wonderment are as great as those of another. In their different ways, the lady who professes that a copple bangle round her wrist has cured her of the scourge of rheumatism is of no less interest and wonderment to you than the fire walkers of the Fiji Islands who will walk with their bare feet on red hot cinders and the ceremonial dances of the Indians when they invoke the rains constitute a spectacle no more awe-inspiring than that of thousands of people travelling to Lourdes every year. Such demonstrations, to me at least, who has witnessed them, have been equal in both the sense of wonderment and curiosity that they have exercised upon me. You may gaze, as I have done, upon the old men and women, many of them crippled, toiling up a mountain merely for the privilege of worshipping at a holy shrine. And you may ask yourself, what makes them do it? Just as you may marvel, that people being baptised in icy water can come up, giving cry to Alleluia, even though their teeth be chattering and their bodies shaking. I wonder sometimes, when I reflect upon the endless string of questions that are placed before the wisdom of my mother, if she ever guessed that during the years which were to follow, in my development to manhood, my insatiable curiosity for delving into the magic of the mind would lead me to attend meetings of a scientific, spiritual and occult nature, and that with the same insatiable curiosity I should try to get into the minds of great men and women of history by reading and making myself familiar with their lives. Would she guess too that I should meet and speak with many outstanding personalities in all lines of human endeavour, searching searching for the answers of what it was that had taken them to the top. Well, I am going to tell you right away that my one great discovery in all this searching and curiosity has been that in them all there was a something that worked magic, and that something is belief. The magic of belief grants phenomenal results for all who accept it. Belief takes you where you want to go with the speed of jet propulsion. As a millionaire once said to me, before I leap up, leap out of bed in the morning, I always say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Three times, just like that, and I am never in a tailspin. From official records which are kept, it is known that at least 6,000 cures have happened in London. Every case of miraculous healing is investigated so as to eradicate every chance of charlatanism. People gaze in wonder and rapture before the basilica and believe. 
Let me tell you about Gabriel Gargam. Paralyzed from the waist downwards, his spine severely injured. Doctors knew that there was no aid that medical science could offer. Gargam struggled to move, but he could not do so. The doctors shook their heads. His mother said, My son, I want you to go to Lourdes. Gabriel did not want to go all that way. But mother insisted, so he arrived at Lourdes, though his nurse feared the worst. Then suddenly, to everyone's amazement, Gabriel raised himself to his feet. When in 24 hours he was walking well, medical examination by 60 doctors showed that this complete cure could not be explained scientifically. Back at home, he resumed his job normally. What had brought about the miraculous change? He suddenly believed. There are many cases as wonderful as this one. To bring out the magic in your mind, belief is the very first essential. There was a young man in financial difficulties who approached his wealthy brother for the loan of only a pound or two. The brother, in a temper, said, Go jump off the pier. The brother did not believe, so he would not help. He looked upon it as mere caging. The greatest psychologist the world has ever known believed in human nature, even when it was nailing him to one of his own crosses, trees. You have not only got to believe in yourself, but you have got to believe in the other fellow. You cannot bring the magic out of your mind in any other way. It is the belief within you that brings outward the material results. Take the case of a busy housewife who woke up one morning feeling like nothing on earth. The thought of the large family wash awaiting her filled her with dread, but suddenly she remembered an energy tablet that a friend had given it her, with the assurance that it was a wonder cure for tiredness. It's in my apron pocket, she thought, so she dug down and found it, then popped it into her mouth. In a few minutes she started work. The big wash was child's play. She finished it, then polished all the floors and cleaned the windows. Life was wonderful, all from that one little tablet. Then she put her hand in her pocket and found the actual tablet. She had swallowed a sweet her child had given her instead. You see, her belief brought a magic which changed her, changed her day and even took away her tiredness. She had brought out the magic in her mind simply by believing. A few years ago, while I was in the hospital, a man in the bed next to mine had his right hand absolutely covered with warts. The doctors were cutting and cauterizing them. Then a patient came up one day and asked the fellow, Would you like me to get rid of the warts off your hand? He said, Oh, please. I will count them for you, and then they will disappear. He did, and we thought no more about it, but in a week the whole mass of warts had disappeared through the magic of his belief. I told this story to a group of doctors one day, and a lady friend of mine shrugged her shoulders, grunted and said, Preposterous. She had no belief. Dr. D. G. Aitken of Cumberland recently reported in the British medical magazine The Practitioner that he cured children's warts by buying them for a few pennies each and telling the children the blemishes would disappear. Aitken wrote that the results had been quite astounding. It was belief, of course. Many well-educated men and women in their respective fields will, in their ignorance, condemn the idea of the thought power. It comes from the Far East and we are born of the West, so they throw away their chances of success as people did in the long ago when Tibetans brought us the ancient secrets of magic. What a fool cannot learn, he laughs at. He will not believe because the light comes from too far a distance. Yet the Magi of the East have the most beautiful homes imaginable and are surrounded by all the luxuries of the world. They know how to work the law of creation. 
They are said to possess, possess the ancient secrets of the lost civilization of Atlantis. It is true that nothing but the possession of these secrets could account for the fabulous wealth at their command. Your wish is your command. These secrets, these laws, have not been lost. They are brought regularly from the east to the west for those who are ready to accept them. If things are not happy and prosperous with you, it is not too late. Belief is a magic formula. Tell anyone how you hope to get this and get that by magic, and they will throw cold water over you, as it were. They will laugh and think you are crazy. They will drop doubts in your way and close your channels with their negative words. It was exactly the same 2,000 years ago. The greatest psychologist knew this. He knew that such knowledge was only for those who were ready to accept it. That is why, when the disciples were taught how to work miracles, i.e. magic, through the wonderful power of belief, they were given the secret and sent forth with the words, Go, but tell no man. It is when you tell other people that troubles begin. They tease, they laugh, they ridicule, they cut you down, they put every stumbling block in the way to prevent you carrying out your dreams, goals, plans. In using this science, which is given you with the complete knowledge that no matter how you use it, you will get results, I give you a warning. Never use it for harmful or evil purposes. Since the beginning of man there have been two great forces at work, good and evil. Both are terrifically powerful in their respective cycles. I cannot emphasize this too strongly. I have to interject here and use my discernment and say Quantum mechanics, quantum physics, the latest scientific discoveries. My own humble experience, there is only one power that powers the whole universe. It is conscious entities that choose to use it for good or so-called evil. There is no source of evil, only conscious entities or groups of people choose. If you employ your magic for harmful or evil purposes, it will boomerang and destroy you. These are not idle words. They are very solemn words. Black magic and white magic are based on the same principles. Bring out the magic in your mind by a strong belief. I have belief, or I would fail every time. I gave a performance under Fleet Street's sharpest eyes. The same as I have done on the stage. Without benefits of lights, audience or all the markings of illusion that are present when people are seeking entertainment in the evening, I gave a performance to these hard-boiled, sceptical journalists and this is what I did. From the fingers of three prominent newspaper men I took three gold signet rings, threaded them on a pencil and, before you could say al Quran, the rings were suspended from the pencils linked in a chain, yet unbroken. Each of the owners identified his ring before they were returned intact. How did I do it? I would not tell, but what I will say is that I would never attempt anything so seemingly incredible if I had no belief. All magicians have belief, otherwise they would make fools of themselves. Belief is the most important thing to anyone who wants to work magic.